Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This week I wanted to return to the world of research and in particular student supervision and why as an academic member of staff you may want to be a second supervisor to a PhD student. Hi, if you're new, my name is Caroline. I'm a UK-based physics lecturer. If you're a returning subscriber, you've probably heard me say that a lot, but welcome back to the channel. And um, it's lovely to have us all back here in this academic space. This week is all about second supervision of PhD students and the connection between them and your research output as an academic. Okay, so let's, let's just jump straight in. As a lecturer or a reader or a professor in a UK university, you at some point will be likely asked to become a second supervisor to a PhD student. Now, in past videos, I've kind of discussed it from, I guess, the perspective of the PhD student and what it means to have a primary supervisor and a secondary supervisor. And really, kind of the names in the title, I guess. So the primary supervisor is the lead, and they will be like looking after the majority of that student's work and research output and direction. Um, but the second supervisor also plays a crucial role. And there's various amounts of involvement the second supervisor can have with that PhD student's research and output. And that can translate across to your own personal research as the academic and how much that studentship impacts your particular research as well. So let me look at this kind of like bit by bit. First up then is what really is the role of the second supervisor? And there can be, you know, various levels of involvement. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the second supervisor is really there as a way of adding expertise into the research leadership and direction for the research student, and also to provide some element of protection, I guess. So if something were to happen to the first supervisor, they were to leave university or something, there is a continuing point of contact in the second supervisor for that student. But within that, you will find that some second supervisors are really heavily involved with the research of the student and other supervisors in the secondary role are much more sleeping secondary supervisors in the sense that they kind of dip in and dip out of the research with the student. Um, it's quite common as you go through your career to be the second supervisor to a number of students. So whilst I will typically have somewhere between, say, two to four, maybe even five PhD students as the primary supervisor, usually I try to stick to being the primary supervisor between two to four students. I may be the secondary supervisor, potentially to say five students, because some of those I'm going to be more heavily involved in their research than with others. So what does that look like then for me as the academic? Well, as the bare kind of minimum, I need to stay at least current with what the student is researching. Um, and that can be as simple as going to um, a meeting with them every few months and their supervisor. Um, at my university, every six months, they have to do an update review, so a progress review of their output. Um, as a second supervisor, I will read that to make sure I'm staying up to date with their, their research over the last half year. I might read their conference papers. I might look at their posters or their presentations ready to go out to a conference. I might walk past the offices and have a chat with them about how the research is going, what they're currently working on, the direction they're moving in. Um, that's kind of quite a light touch second supervisor role. If I'm more actively involved as a second supervisor, I might have more frequent meetings. So I could be meeting with that PhD student and their primary supervisor, you know, every couple of weeks. Um, it might be that sometimes I meet with a student without the primary supervisor being there. Um, and we'll discuss that in a little bit, but that's often if you're bringing a certain set of expertise in, you might be involved in the project due to certain research that you do, which means that you need to have kind of one-to-one -one meetings with a student working on a certain area, a certain part of their PhD. 
Um, and of course, if you're a more actively involved second supervisor, you might then, I guess, travel out to them with conferences, meetings, and be involved in some of the decision making and direction when they're setting their kind of future looking outlook on their kind of research progress. And so of course, this sounds like it could be quite a lot of work. Um, and in some cases, if you're kind of a, a light touch second supervisor, it really can be quite minimal work. So you're not having to take on an extra massive workload on top of your already busy academic day. The more involved you are with the research and then the, the kind of the output of the, the research PhD, then of course, the more personal time you have to dedicate aside to being involved in that second supervisor role for that particular student. So why, why would you do it? Um, I think as a primary supervisor to a PhD student, obviously it's very obvious why you're doing it. Quite often you're interested in a particular idea or research theme, um, especially in the sciences, quite often it's the academics kind of initial idea, they've secured funding for a particular kind of research question to be explored. So they are very personally interested in the research output of that student because it aligns completely with their own research direction. As a secondary supervisor, sometimes there is a super strong alignment between your research and that of the student. And sometimes maybe you are being involved in that project as second supervisor because of some kind of tangential or expertise that you can bring in for a particular aspect of that PhD research. Um, and you might find if that's the case, like sometimes I might come into a project because of a particular piece of computational um, research that the student is going to be exploring. I might be a sleeping quiet second supervisor, maybe for like six months to a year, but then in their second year of the research, when they hit the point where they're doing the thing that I'm then the expert in or have the expertise in, um, I might be then more involved. So I could be involved heavily for a period of three months, six months, nine months, and then I might go back to being a kind of lighter touch second supervisor again. So it can vary. It's not like you're going to be at the same level of secondary supervision throughout the whole of their PhD. You can sometimes become more involved and then become less involved as they go throughout their kind of their PhD research. As an academic then, becoming a second supervisor is a very useful way to kind of get your your foot and your kind of bearings into what it's like to be a PhD supervisor and um, without the whole responsibility of being that primary supervisor straight away. So you can kind of test the waters to see what it's like and how it kind of it works when you are interacting with a, a student and the kind of typical activities that a PhD supervisor will do, um, which is another video for another day. But that's a really useful starting point for somebody who's maybe new to supervision altogether and they want to have a more gentle introduction. They might start off by becoming a second supervisor and part of the supervisory team rather than becoming the primary supervisor straight away. Or you could be particularly interested in a kind of a research programme of work that's slightly outside what you're currently doing. And maybe that research PhD studentship is going to kind of like bridge the gap. So maybe you're interested in the work of a particular academic and the work output of their students. You can bring a certain skill set into that PhD yourself, um, but maybe it's a new topic area for you or it's a, a new application of something that you haven't worked on before, actually by being the second supervisor to a PhD student, it can then introduce you also into that kind of network, the community, and the kind of the people who are operating within that research space, their conferences, their publications. So it can be a mechanism to help you kind of, I guess, not transition, but to help you kind of move a little bit from one research space to another research space as long as you as a second supervisor are still providing some tangible, meaningful expertise as to why you are the second supervisor for that student. And of course, if you are the second supervisor for a student, it's likely that when they are writing up their papers, their journal articles, if you've been involved in the research, if you've been involved in maybe looking at the direction of what they're working on, having input into their kind of their results or their planned experiments, um, you know, it's highly likely that you might end up being listed as a co-author, which obviously is always a nice output as well. Um, you know, academia is a game where sometimes we are chasing publications. 
And so, yes, it often doesn't hurt to have more publications coming out under or at least linked to your name. One thing, though, to be aware of, and I will end with this, this is my kind of like leaving thought, I guess, is that if you are the second supervisor, you are quite often going to be the person the university will turn to if the primary supervisor leaves. So when a primary supervisor, for whatever reason, leaves a university, if they're staying within academia and taking another university appointment, then quite often the students will get the choice to either remain at the university they're currently at or to go with and kind of like follow their supervisor to the new supervisor's institution. But if the students are staying at the university they started at, or if the academic who was the primary supervisor has left academia, um, has gone into maybe into a different world, industry, something completely different, then obviously those students are going to need a new primary supervisor. And as secondary supervisor, you are most likely going to be the obvious candidate that they come to to ask first whether you'll step up to become the primary supervisor. This has happened to me now on a few occasions. Um, in all the occasions it's happened on, it's worked out really well. You know, I've been the second supervisor to a student and then I've been obviously, I, I guess, up promoted to become their primary supervisor when their secondary when their primary supervisor had to, to exit for various reasons. Um, it can be jarring for the student and that's something we should talk about in the future is about how you as an academic handle it when you have to step in to a PhD student's journey when they're in their second year or their third year and they're used to working with a particular supervisor as their primary and then you become the primary supervisor. Um, but in all the cases that I've had where that's, that's been required, I found it to be fairly a smooth process, but that's mainly because I've been, I guess, actively involved as a second supervisor. Um, and it's been a research area that maybe, although not my main area of research, I have had strong links to that particular research topic or I've had a side interest in that particular research area, which has meant that actually taking over that PhD studentship hasn't caused me particularly any problems. And in fact, it's often been quite a nice, enjoyable thing to do because there's a new line of research that then comes into the portfolio of research that I'm looking after. But yeah, let me know, have you been a second supervisor? Are you thinking about becoming a second supervisor? Um, maybe you are a second supervisor right now and for whatever reason it's not working out and we should discuss that in, a, in another video the dynamic between the second supervisor and the primary supervisor can be particularly important and can make or break your enjoyment as the academic in looking after a particular PhD student but this video <laughs> is already long enough um, so for now just let me know in the comments have you been a second supervisor? Um, would you like to be a second supervisor or do you try to stay away from second supervision of PhD students? Um, as always, look after yourselves, take care. If you haven't hit and subscribe yet, please do think about it. It's a really nice space to have here on YouTube to chat all things university and academia. Have a great week and um, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments about PhD secondary supervision. Right, I should go. I should go back to doing some uni work. I will see you next Monday. Take care. Bye.